seven ways to live a softer life. But first, like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Press that notification bell so that way you'll know when I drop a video. And please leave comments, engage, share it. This content can help other people as well, okay? Number one step, cut back on how much you're working. As women, we sometimes work ourselves to exhaustion. We deplete ourselves in ways that we're not supposed to as women. We have to understand that we are delicate. And because of that, we shouldn't be working these long, laborious jobs that are causing us to have stress in our bodies because that messes with um, not just your mental, but your physical. It messes with your mental. And we were not built to take on the same kind of stresses that a man can. So as women, we have to find more creative ways to make our money. I would never tell a woman that her sole source of income should be a man because to me, it's just wise to have your own money. Even if you've been married like myself, 18 years, it's still good to have your own coin. And I'm going to leave it at that. But as women, we have to be creative in how we do that. I used to be the type of woman that would work so many long hours, pick up extra shifts. If there were any extra shifts available, I would do it. If there were uh, double shifts, meaning I'm working that one night and then I'm going to just work it to overnight. I'm going to do that too, just to be making extra money. But I had to realize that as a woman, I have creativity. I have a way of doing things where I can still get the same amount of pay in an easier way. So as women, we have to tap into that creative side of ourselves and understand that we don't have to labor as hard as men do in order to make money for ourselves, okay? So cut back on the amount of time that you're working and look for new and creative ways to make money, okay? Number two, create a routine for yourself. For me, I like to go shopping early in the morning on the weekdays, okay, because I have that kind of schedule set up so that I'm available. I'll drop my kids off their school schedule 7.15, 7.20 in the morning. That's when I'll go to the market and do my food shopping. Or if I go to the mall, yes, I'm there at elderly hours. No disrespect to anybody, but I'm there when the people are mall walking and doing their thing and the groups are out. I'm there at that time. You know why? Because it's less stressful for me. I'm not a person that likes to be in the malls when it's packed. Like this time of year, this is, uh, this is, is this Christmas Eve? What's today? The 24th? Yeah, today, this is Christmas Eve. And I would not, I wouldn't dare be at the mall right now because I value my peace. Um, we don't need anything. So for me, it's like, okay, unless I absolutely have to go out and get something, I'm not going to subject myself to the stress of, waiting in a long line, dealing with people bumping into you, dealing with people, you know, fighting over the last whatever it is. No, I have a structured way of doing things that keep me at peace. I go to the market early in the morning. I take and run my errands early in the morning because I know there's less people out. I'm not antisocial. I just like doing things in peace. I can't enjoy my shopping experience if I'm out there fighting with somebody over the last the thing of foil or the last roll of toilet paper. Like I can't do that. That that for me is not peaceful and it's not soft. So when everybody else is about to wake up at about 12 o'clock to get their shopping done, I'm back in the house and on to the next thing. All right. So create a routine for yourself. Number three, make room for leisure activities. There should be at least one leisure activity in your routine every day. For me, I like to make sure that I take time to create my bracelets, create my jewelry. While that is a business for me, it's still a leisure activity. Yes, I'm getting paid from it, but it started off as a leisure activity. Um, even I'll go out shopping and you don't have to spend, this is not an endorsement for you to spend a lot of money. You can, I mean, if your shopping experience is at the dollar store, look, I go to the dollar store and I rack up on stuff or I'll just walk around with my coffee and look at things. I go to TJ Maxx often, you know, that's a leisure activity for me going to the gym. Um, that's a part of your physical wellness, but it can be considered a leisure activity because it's helping you to become better and it's also relieving tension. Okay. So whatever you can find that will help you to kind of lighten your load and lighten your mind. Um, so that way you're not so tense and stressed up. 
do that. Some people have like adult coloring books or going to the spa. That's a leisure activity. Um, I don't do that as often as I used to. I really need to get back into doing that. But go to the spa. My goal for the coming year is to at least go to the spa twice a year, um, twice a month. Um, so go to the spa, you know, getting your nails done. I had to give my nails a break because they were hurting underneath that acrylic. I like I like how it looks. It's beautiful. However, it can really weaken your real nail. So I had to back off of that for a little while, but go get your nails done. If it's just a regular manicure to get rid of the dead skin, go get your nails done, get your hair done or do your hair. Just partake in something that's going to make you feel light or something that you don't feel like you're giving much energy to. Okay. Number four, get rid of toxic people. You cannot live a soft life if you have people that are making things hard for you. I'm not saying that you will not have some kind of conflict with people who are close to you. Because if you have close friendships, if you're in a relationship, even with your children, you're going to have conflicts. I'm not saying get rid of everybody that you have a conflict with. But what I am saying is there are some people, and this is where being a wise feminine woman comes in. You know that there are some people that just mean you no good at all. There are some people who always have something negative to say. There are some people who don't want to see you doing well. There are some people that are just so quick to always throw something negative in the mix. Those kind of people you don't want to surround yourself with. Even if they're not doing things to you. Look at how they treat people when you are together. I had to stop hanging around women who mistreat service staff when we go to a restaurant. Or be uh, very uh, impatient with people. I'm not saying that I haven't had my moments, but to be blatantly disrespectful to people, they're just mean spirited. Get rid of those type of people. You can't be a feminine woman, a softer, gentler woman and have people around you who are so hard and brash and just mean for no reason. OK, so get rid of those kind of people. Number five, let people help you stop feeling like you have to do everything by yourself. You don't. I guarantee you, even if you're in the market and somebody offers to pull something off a top shelf for you, let them do it. If your husband, and it took me a long time to let him do this. My husband, he goes to work in the morning. Sometimes he will volunteer and most times he'll take the kids to school in the morning for me before he goes to work. I would feel so bad like I'm here. Why would he need to take the kids to school in the morning before going to work when I'm here? But you know, he wanted me to get more rest. He knows that I'm not really that much of a morning person. So he allows me to lay down a little bit longer and take the children to school before he goes to work, which allows me to ease more into my day. Do you know I fought against that because, you know, I was thinking, well, I'm not that good of a mom if I can't get up to just take my kids to school and this kind of stuff. And it's like, no, you have low iron. You not even without having low iron. You have low iron, but even if you don't have that, your husband just wants you to rest. Just rest and ease into your day. Do your errands and you'll pick them up. Let him do it. So I give you that. Let somebody help you. Don't feel like you have to be Wonder Woman doing everything, okay? And number six, don't be afraid to say no. Don't feel like you have to please people by doing things that you don't feel comfortable with. There is freedom in saying no. When you don't feel like doing something, don't do it. If you have to do too much back and forth in your mind, like, well, if I don't do it, then this, well, this and that, that, that. I had to learn that if I have to keep going back and forth in my mind or whether or not I'm going to do something, it's just meant for me to just not do it. Just don't do it. If it don't come easy, if the answer doesn't enthuse me or the idea of whatever it is doesn't enthuse me, just let it go. You don't make things harder than what it has to be. Just say no, okay? Or depending on what it is, of course, it might not be that easy, but actually it is. Even when dealing with family or children, you might be able to do something, but just not at the moment they want you to do it. And that's okay. Delayed gratification is something that everybody needs to witness and experience at least once in their life, okay? So don't be afraid to tell people no. And then lastly, which should have been number one, which is the overarching theme of everything for me, Spend time with God. When your spirit is fed, you can operate and maintain more in other areas of your life. 
Your mind won't be so scattered. And I can speak for myself when I renew my mind with the things of God, with the word of God, when I pray, when I meditate, when I just get quiet before the Lord and tune everything else out. That allows me to think more clearly on the things that I want to do. You can't be so consumed with the things of the world, uh, your responsibilities, what you need to do, what other people want you to do, what they want from you. I need to know how God wants me to operate for the day. I need to get guidance and wisdom on how to be the kind of wife and mother that I need to be for my family. I need to get guidance and wisdom on just being a person in the world and maintaining. You can't do these things if you don't spend concentrated time with the Lord. Okay. That's the way I see it. And that's the way it is on this channel. Okay. Like, and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Seven ways to live a soft life. You just have to make sure that you are taking time to make things easier for yourself. And the way I see it, implementing these steps will help you to do that. All right. Hit the like button and share. Take care.